I am here vibing with one of the living legends in the entertainment industry. His parents named him Lowell Dunbar, but we know him as Sly. Father yeah. Sly. Yeah, man, respect. How are you, sir? I'm cool. And this doesn't come like an interview. It comes like a reason. You know, Mad. Probably, probably should sip out some, some, some fruit juice and everything. Yeah. Right? Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Place of birth, where did you grow up? Uh, um, the date of birth of the place. The king, I uh, born in um, Winner Road. Winner Road. 2G Winner Road. Road. Yeah. Road. Mm -hmm. That's where, yeah. In the east. Yeah. yeah. And you grew up it, uh, on Winner Road. I part of life when I was young and then I moved to Waterhouse. So yeah. By the end of six, six, seven. I've been there ever since until I reached maybe around. 25, 30, going on 30, mm -hmm. like that, less than that. You know? So, Winward Road to Waterhouse. Yeah, and then my father was living in Duane Park and mm -hmm. I stayed with him, you know. Okay, okay, so you moved between Waterhouse yeah, and yeah, Duane Park. Yeah. But most of the time is Waterhouse, the lifetime is Waterhouse. Schooling? Went to, um, when I used to live on, um, I mean, I used to go to a school called St. Michael's School, and then when I went to uh, Waterhouse, so I started going to Trenchtown, so I went mm -hmm. to the primary school. Okay. There's the first time I ever saw a demonstration. So <laughs> they, they wanted to get rid of one head mask. And Don't everybody, attention? Yeah, everybody wanted the next one. So mm -hmm. was, school never kept that day. So they say no child at no school. Trench down high? Yeah, to the companies. To the companies. To the companies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Siblings? Yeah, no, no, no brothers, just two sisters. Two sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, mommy and daddy still around? No, no, no. Both of them passed on. Yeah, yeah. My condolences, sister. Yeah, my respect. Yeah, but sisters are okay though. One. One. One died. One died. Yeah. Okay. Big one died. Okay. What was it like growing up though on Winward Road in Waterhouse? Well, Winward Road it was a, a kid and I remember modern party used to work at the airport and like you know when a lot of foreign artists used to come in, she used to tell me that Shirley and Lee is coming in today, she sat them at the airport mm -hmm. and one of foreign artists was coming and she used to tell us and but well, she was like into her music still and everything like that. Yeah. Know, so. When I went to Waterhouse to live now and, and everything, the first time I even saw a cow live, you know, I remember. <laughs> so I can't believe I'm looking at a real cow, you know. Yeah. I think so. I'm um, living there and start going to school in Trenchstone, seeing some of these artists. Mm hmm Like you go up here and about and everything, you know. I've been there for a while, 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 while. Then so my friend went, if I went to Casey, I didn't go. I said, I stayed to Trenchstone. Yeah. Yeah, oh, music, the yeah, yeah. The music and uh, they would just go out to the roots yeah, of the whole thing. Yeah. You know? People like Jeremy and producer. Donovan? Yeah, he used to go to school with me and everything. Oh, okay, like cool. Yeah, yeah. And mm. then like I went to Casey, I didn't go. Yeah. I stayed at Trenchstone Comprehensive. And, um, I don't know, friends of us was always in the music business. Obviously, me and Willie Williams used to be in the same class. And, mm -hmm. You know, I, when I get a free period with um, like the, 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 the classroom going. Yeah. He used to call me Scatterlights at school. Oh. <laughs> it does all of the song like a piano, so it's a yeah. long night and we used to sing all kinds of songs. Yeah. And like that. So, what happened now? A couple of friends of ours wanted to sing and everything, so we decided it was coming on to like some holiday, so we can get a banner or something come. So, we went and checked Ken Boot. Mm. And then in town, and to the show at the school, and he mm. said yes. and. Himself and the Gaelers band came by and the yeah. performer and you know, we're always into the music and everything and so wow. <laughs> this is it, you know. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Don't know this thing, I don't know. But that, that school it. thing. So Ken Wood is really <laughs> when you check it, Ken Wood is really, really my godfather yeah, in a so, sense. Oh. His, his performance and we check him on him, say, Yeah, we'll come on him, come mm -hmm. to school. It was a boy and we That really did it for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, really with him say yeah, we'll start you out, you know. Yeah. Not knowing what it would bring or anything, but they just love it. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. And my mother kinda of loved the music this so when I tell her I say, Hey mom, no fear going back to school music. They say, Okay. Just mm. like that. So wow. just okay. It was very supportive. It, you know? Yeah. yeah and, <laughs> but she always to tell me a lot of things about Arabella Fontaine, mm. Louis Armstrong, you know? Yeah. I think like that's so a light box now was the one who was come around with a guitar because he used to sing in a group named called the Termites. Mm -hmm. and That's light. Light parts, mm -hmm. yes. And, and we had this big tape recorder that a friend of ours called Neville brought by the house and we'd keep the tape recorder and play it every day. And mm -hmm. So light parts would come by, play his guitar and write a song and I 
we mimic the timing on the tape cover, but it sounds like a real drum. You know? <laughs> so from there, you know, Lyle used to tell me Lyle come from Studio One. The daytime he come with the guitar, my mother said Lyle Parks come with the guitar, she always smile, my mm. dad uh, things are yeah, going today, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there, there, there until I started playing in little bands and things. Lyle went and played R.C. in Winsable. Mm -hmm. And another friend of mine called Ranchi. Mm -hmm. And then why I went and played like a band called Yard Rooms. Yard Rooms. So, mm. so one day, you know, I went down, so I was going to check Ranchi and lie down by Irish Invincible. They were at a rehearsal. Down where? Irish Invincibles. Oh, okay. They had a little place down by Olympic Way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I went down there, so the drummer was a great drummer by the name of Tin Leg was playing with them. And I think he left the rehearsal the day to do something else, and then I was sat, sat there and Answer Colin said to me, no, say, you can play drums a little bit. He said, I'm going to play. play. He said, oh, I like how you play. And eventually led to doing my first recording, which is a song called Night Doctor. Yeah. So this is my Answer Colin. So okay. Say, I wanted to play another song for me. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. He said, I like how you play. I said, oh, really? Thank you. And <laughs> I would play Night Doctor, which came out as the Offsetters. That was a big instrumental hit for him. Yeah. And then within the same year, that I was the one, one and fifteen. Um, and she come, came up with an idea, and he called me and said, listen to this piano thing. And it was playing the, mail, the melody for Double Barrel, and I said, well, mm. it sounds great. And went to rehearsal for a week. I'm done by um, Spanish on Road with Irish Invisible Band. So after rehearsal, I asked myself to stay back and work on Double Barrel. Yeah. And I said, him, said to him, that this is, is going to be a million selling. And I said, really? <laughs> So we worked on it and we went, we went and got the time and booked the studio time and recorded a song and and really turned out that's the second song I played and it was a million selling song. Million selling song. Yeah. So from early the things started. Yeah, so like, <laughs> no, it started early so <laughs> I I was kind of, I wasn't, I'm not new to what is happening in the music yeah, industry. And yeah. that was, when it went under, it went to number one in England in 1917, it went to number 22 on the pop chart in America. Mm. So like, what does that mean now with the music? Like we saw it coming and we did it at a time. So to us, we can take that smile and say, we want to see everybody go there. Yeah, yeah, do it, you know? yeah. And I know frightened things they want it more than anybody. Yeah. We'd like to see everybody going to achieve mm. it, you know? So whatever happened to the Yard Rooms though? Well, the Yard Rooms was a little band that, um, when we used to go, when we used to go and look at them playing, it was Mikey Boo, who was a great drummer. I learned a lot from him too, and he was playing with them and then they left. And then I went in as a little amateur <laughs> to, to, to take the space yeah. and play, you know. So the first gig was a place called Teens and Twenty on, on Walton Park Road. I can't remember when we did this song, Red Red Wine. The guy who was singing was Barry Hawk and mm -hmm. get a whole parano plus clap and everything. I said, boy, I come like a pass to this. <laughs> so I said, I'm way now. I'm yeah. trying to take this serious because my mother died. Mm. Early, you know, so yeah, I said, yeah, well, yeah. all right, um, I'm an owner, so I have to really make it work for my mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I took it serious, so, you know, um, like I said, Mike Kibo was kind of influential in the early days, and then Anse Collins was very supportive, because, like, when we used to play in the band, like, I couldn't play the, the flow show thing, you know, with the rumba dance. Yeah. Thing, so, as I seen a musician, he would take the drum and play for me, and then... I would come back and play for dance crowd. Oh, okay. After okay. years, I kind of learned. You learn it, yeah. How to play. So, <laughs> really, in a sense, like I'm like a street kind of musician because I didn't have the money to go to music school mm -hmm, or anything mm -hmm, like that. So, you so learned learn it along the, street, the way. Yes, and along the way, we learned from one another. Mm -hmm. Checking other musicians, like we used to check Willie Lindo. And there's a guy called Moxie, and we used to check, like, Paul, who played with two centimeters on. I was young, drummer used to ask a lot of questions, I used to. Um, look at lightnings from the scatter lights because mm -hmm. I remember when I was like early 10, my mother sent me to the stage show to watch the scatter lights. And then they have to put on your suit, you know, and then you tie it <laughs> and, go, and go to the stage show. Yeah. Get the last seat in the front to and watch lightnings beat the drums. That's mm -hmm. what well, what I want to do. Yeah. But my mother was really supportive, you know. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting, you know. That's what I'm getting yeah, that. Really, a lot really. of A lot of the drive that you got, especially after she died, yeah, was, that's, I really you know, after was to repeat her feet. You know? Really, really, I can't really turn back and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with the help of Live Parks, Hans Collins early just kind of helped me. Yeah. And kind of establish yourself. Yeah, given mm. that, that drive, you know. After that came doing a lot of recording in Jamaica, like playing on one of the first dub songs that come out called Sam's a Dub, mm -hmm. which was produced by Carl Patterson, right? And the flip side of it, of it was Tubbs, King Tubbs mixes 
was a side and got played was a dub side. It's called mm. Sounds of Dub. So that, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize that we had played a song because I said, this record said, don't want Sounds of Dub, you know? I said, Sounds of Dub, I don't know the song. Yeah. But, and look at the next, the next one, I said, Carl Peterson, like, Carl Patterson, I said, hmm. So I flipped over, I said, oh, this is a song called See Sounds of yeah. Dub, I'm saying. <laughs> It was the version, yeah. it was like a big seller for Tubbies. Yeah, it kept on getting better and better. You kept on working with more yeah, and more people. Yeah, working with more people, playing in bands. Like, mm -hmm. you know, in those days, there were a lot of bands in Jamaica. Yeah. So they had nightclubs. Mm -hmm. They had a live club. It was strictly like live music, you know? Yes. So we used to go to Ocean's Montego, be all over. On the tour circuit. Everywhere, yeah. Mm -hmm. When did the link with Robbie come about? Oh, the link though? with Robbie came in like, in around 1974. Mm hmm. Like we used to go down by, you know, eyeglass versus down by Randy Street. Where the place name? Eyeglass versus. Eyeglass versus. <laughs> yeah. Our musician. Our oh, music. Okay, okay, okay. Like, it's just a name. Going, the name yeah. put it. Yeah. We used to go in and punch the clock, you know? Yeah. I used to go there and meet up and meet Robbie and we start talking about music and everything. And when he kind of started sharing the same kind of idea. Mm hmm. But when Robbie first came to a session, was Robbie was playing at a club called the Evil People Club. Evil People Club. I was playing at, <laughs> and all of this club was on, was on Red Hill Road, and yeah. I was playing at Tit for Tat. Yeah, t <laughs> Light Park. And Nancy Collins used to play at a club called Stables. Mm -hmm. So on Red Hill Road, every club on Red Hill Road, about seven clubs used to have live band. Yeah. Right there. Derek Lara from, from, from the Tamlins used mm -hmm. to play drums in a band, seventh extension done by um, in Neptune's Lounge. Yeah. And sing, you know? So, meeting Robbie you now and a guy named Toto. I mean, Toto myself I played on a Dennis Brown record called Toto. Um, Toto. Yeah. Called uh, Money in My Pocket, the original version. Yeah. You played so, on that? Yeah, the original mm -hmm. version. And, and I played on the new, the, 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 the remake of it also. Mm -hmm. So, Toto, me and Light Parks and Toto played on it. And the, the new remake it was me and Light Parks playing it. So, Toto was telling Robbie about me. And then he came over to the club and Robbie said, wow. So Robbie got a session hook up with Bonnie Lee, mm -hmm. you know, strikingly a producer. Yeah. So they put my Robbie together in the first song and it was a smash and... Mm -hmm. you remember what song was, was that? I think it was a, a general song called Too Good To Be Forgotten. Oh, okay, like okay. <laughs> and then after that, I started doing a lot of sessions mm -hmm. on Channel One all over. And then I decided, you know, to, to make my name in the music after <laughs> trying to something else. But there were yeah. so many good drummers. Yeah. Because Jamaica has a lot of great drummers. I mm. said, so, what am I going to... Stand out in a field. Yeah, in a field like With this. So many. These people are awesome. Mm -hmm. it, and try and take some ideas. I remember I used to sit down and watch like creative dance with my mom. Mm -hmm. A guy named Eddie Thomas, one of these next rex neck of the people. And I try and look at the dance, and dance into the beat of the drum. I know when, when, anywhere the drum go, the body move is there. So. Then I start looking back at the Jamaica music and look at lightness. People who set the trend. Listen a couple of songs that they had played and I listened to what they was playing and then I started listening wide, wide now to a lot of African music, a lot of stuff and hearing what these drummers are playing and say, what can I do to come inside the music and, and just add what is there? Yeah. So funny, like we are this little studio, a friend of mine called Newton and um, um, not really in deep in mortals but in the same era. Yeah. And we used to go there and, and record every day. And he used, to, he used to have a, like a discotheque. And mm -hmm. he would get foreign songs. Um, and we go there like on a Wednesday night to just listen to set of foreign songs. <laughs> His discotheque was just Chris, you know? Yeah. And there was a, a song called, um, by a group called, um, I don't remember the name of the group, but the drum sound and it was great. And I said, wow, you know, if we could get this drum sound like this in reggae, mm. it would be awesome. So how can we do that then? And we start learning how, how to get the drums mm -hmm. and a certain tone and a certain so start doing some session at Channel One and the engineer had left the city. So Ernest, the other brother of Joe, producer, came into the studio and started working and trying to explain to him, say if we couldn't get the drums sound like Motown, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we played a couple of records and listened and said, Wow. So we did they trying to get the drum sound. So we'd go there and I started to sometime Ernest and play a couple of, of stuff. We start Try and try and record it every every weekend. I would cut like a double to listen mm -hmm. what was there, and then but all right, the Philadelphia uh, the musicers that came into the music industry and started creating them. I was so well, if we could get the drum sound like this, then you know exactly what we could do. And I said, okay, really? And I said, yes. So we tried, 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 and we got it. And the first big song we came out of Channel One was 
I think when the right time came, come when, when the right, right time come. Right time come. With the, di the diamonds mm. and mighty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we say yeah, it's sounding great, and I like what the drummer sound like, and. From there, Ernest started to experiment with mm. him. I gave him the time yeah. to be there with him to get the thing right. And we got to me feel pleased with us for a year and everything. And Jojo kind of gave me the go ahead to experiment mm -hmm. and be free, you know. And I never really go off the outside of yes, the, yes. and play with him. And never go over the top. Yeah, I still kept take it. it step by step, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And ever since that, everything started working. So this year, everything started to develop. And sooner or later, you know, I, I hear many of them calling all over the place and like <laughs> people in England said they wouldn't buy a record if it's not slapping right, it. Yeah. Like, no, this is just, this is crazy because I'm just a drummer, I'm just, yeah. just playing, you know. But what I was doing, they tried to pick up what I was doing and what I was feeling. But mm -hmm. I I remember James Brown used to say, give the drummer some, right? And they would get funky. Mm -hmm. And the whole place <laughs> would go crazy, right? Yeah. But they were playing in grooves still, you know. And people dance it, but when you go give the drummer some the place open up a while and say, How oh, can we get that inside of reggae that? <laughs> we could give the drummer some and he's still playing the same reggae concept but not going outside but people could still dance it, but mm -hmm, the beat mm -hmm. it's changing and I say, Okay. I start working on it, working on it and we could listen back to stuff. So when we work on the channel one, recording the channel one, I wait till the record is finishing recording and then I would try something new and then I listen to the playback and say, Oh, that sounds good, so I can turn it into the yeah, yeah. you know. So all, <laughs> all this idea, experimenting. All this idea came from looking at African music, mm -hmm. people dancing to just drum beats and singing and I said, Wow, what is this this is it. So mm -hmm. I took the idea and then I bring it to the trap set and start experimenting. But I never go outside because at the time we were playing a group of musicians, so I can't play by myself. Yes, by myself. yes, yes. After yes. play that everything sounds good. With the group, so, everything blend. So I would like to give like all these musicians credit for helping me to project myself because they buried me doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. everything was so oh, or a patient. Yeah, it was unorthodox. That yeah. They didn't know what I was doing anymore, but <laughs> they never frowned at me. Yeah. They just go all in. So, mm -hmm. so for me, reaching me around, I have to give enough respect yeah, they would have played that to the important musician because they said they don't like what I'm doing, they would mm -hmm. have to change. But yes. not for one moment mm -hmm. they were. I said so the producers and the musicians and the artists, mm -hmm. enough respect to them because yeah. they, they allow me to do the, the, the funny thing I was doing on the drums. You know? Out of that synopsis that you just gave, one of the things that stood out was that you were always willing to experiment. You never just settle for what the music was. You wanted to add and infuse different things to make the music evolve and grow. Yeah, because I was looking at the, the entire world of music, what is happening today, and I said, like, we're like a, from a small country, and how can we project our music that people could uh, just take one minute to listen to it? Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know what I have to start from the drums away. If you get a good drum sound and recording, the actual, actual recording is going to be sounding great. Not yeah. Cool. We try and, and try and get that in all recording all the time. Robbie and myself we try to get it with Ernest or the Ranchi we try and say what they will say on the session we try and get a, a good drum sound. I play in a certain way that the engineer will get a good balance from mm -hmm. me playing. Not playing too hard or too soft, but you know. Yeah. And we end up with that we feel um satisfied at this moment what has happened because the jump pattern in reggae has become a norm in the world today. People mm -hmm. trying to play. Sure, like sure, sure. Everybody trying to play. And this like was it. what we were trying to do instead of. Once, 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 once ago, we used to um, feel a little bit shy when we go to play against an American yeah. musician because they're better than us. Yeah, felt in fear. But we realize now that they are projecting their music, so let's project our own. Makes sense. But we create our own style, so they can't tell us we are wrong. So mm. they have, they yes, have to look that, what they are doing, true, we respect true, what they are doing. So. True. We have reached that milestone now and we don't want to look over our shoulder and care who's playing on yeah. the next side. We play what they're playing because mm -hmm. this is our culture. So. Yeah, and the result is there because they keep on sampling yeah. reggae yeah. and dance so, all day and day out. At this moment, I feel good where the music is at for these things because mm -hmm. now we have our own drum style and our drum sound and everything. Yes. We have for them, for them mm -hmm. jazz and whatever they have. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's all good. Do you have a number in your head <laughs> as it relates to the amount of Chucks you would have worked on. <laughs> well, when checking, you know, speaking to Andrew Collins, and I said to him, I was like, how much track do you think I play? He said, oh, he knows that you're the most recorded musician in the world. I said, mm. really? I said, you played over a million records. I know over that a million records. Because I'm the first one to carry the suit, and you haven't stopped. Yeah. Every day I said, I think so, you're right in answer. Answer is still around? 
Yeah, man. Okay, Thank nice. Thank you for the energy, nice, man. Nice, nice, nice. Facebook or something. Oh, okay, message, cool, you know. cool. Because they're, they're, they're my godfather and light parks. Yeah, mm hmm We did um, a session the other day with light parks in here. So those two people, I look up to them with a lot of respect. Yes. You know? So over a million tracks. Yeah, man. And so look at me and say, boy, you know, I'm really free proud. Because yes. of the one who took me to the recording mm -hmm. and I uh, let him down, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Just out of curiosity though, I kind of understand how artists get paid, but how does a drummer get paid? Now, when you used to do like sessions, and yeah. you do a crowd session, you might get $5 to play in a track, play two track, you get $10. And Jamaican, the, US? Jamaican. Jamaican, yeah. yeah. I mean, in the early time, that's early days, sense, yeah. Now, it has gone up, and sometimes you do a tour, you make some money and everything, and you, <laughs> yeah. you make records, and they get to understand that you know you could write your own song. Mm -hmm. Some drummers mm -hmm. feel like they can't write a song, but I wrote my own song and I was, I was signed to The Virgin. Oh, nice. In 1970. As a writer? No, the music. As a musician, okay. And, and cool. As an artist. As an artist. <laughs> yeah, because of the jump thing was. Yeah. The style was just playing. It was over the world so much. Yes. Like, and the diamonds were just breaking. Mm -hmm. And we did the tour of England, so they figured more or less they should sign me. So I made two records for them, you know? Yeah. As in your actual voice. No, not singing, oh, instrumental. Oh, instrumental. You know? Yeah, but that'll lead me into the next question, though. <laughs> um, have you ever recorded vocally? Yeah, me and Robbie try a little thing. Robbie, Robbie, <laughs> yeah, Robbie, 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 thing. Robbie's really the, the great the singer. The singer. I try a little thing mm. also. Robbie said, I like when I sing, but yeah. but he was really the singer, and sometimes yeah. he kind of helped me. And we did, we did an album called 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yes, that was the first album? No, we were, uh, I don't think it was the first one, no. but we were just... We were down in Nassau and we just had some time to spend. We just mm -hmm. went and cut this track and we cut, cut the album like in two days. And How many there. tracks were on the album? I know it was 10 or 10 something. in yeah. two days? Yeah, man. Mm. Now I'm going to cut genius. Like, now I'm going to cut like 20 tracks sometime a day. A day? Yeah. For the producer, yeah, man. So, out of all of them songs in your voice, um, <laughs> you can't give me a piece of what? No, we're not singing, man. <laughs> no. If Robbie there, you know, Robbie, Robbie there, Robbie there, give me a piece. I sing, you know, because. Yeah. Uh, Ansel, Where is he, by the way? He's in Miami. Ansel, Miami. Ansel's a good singer. Ansel is a good singer. Light Parks. I said yeah. Light Parks, they don't know when I sing. I mean, I pre, pre probably may not be the only interviewer who have your singing. You know. I mean, I think you get up another interview, I sing. No. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. They will laugh after me. <laughs> they will laugh after you. Okay, I sing officially. The Light Parks. Officially, yeah. yeah. Officially. Mm. Some of the names outside of Jamaica that you would have worked with. Um, some of the uh, artists. Yes. Well, I work with Nona Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Work with um, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. And Mick Jagger on his solo album also. Mm -hmm. Bob Dylan. Joe Cocker. Mm-hmm. Herbie Hancock. No Doubt. Queen Latifah. Queen Latifah. Simple Red. Mm. Um, Gwen Guthrie. Grace Jones. John Armour Trading. You work with everybody further down by. No, not really. And, um, <laughs> some of them I can't remember. Yeah, I right understand. I understand. What would have been your favorite work collaborative experience with oh, an Maxi, overseas? Maxi, Maxi, Maxi Priest as well, yes. Yeah. Your, your, um, your favorite collaborative effort with an overseas favorite. entertainer? Right. Or most <laughs> memorable? Well, everything is memorable because everything was at the point where you have to go there and make yourself no. perform the best. Yes. And everything was went to goal. Gold. Everything mm. was went goal. You know, everything went goal. Yeah. yeah. So with Bob Dylan, I think when I said Bob Dylan, he was on his comeback, mm -hmm. and we were in Nassau and doing Grace Jones, and the call came in. Mm -hmm. So then he said, Bob Dylan has called for some. Me Robbie look at one of us, Bob Dylan. <laughs> so we are a great fan of Bob Dylan still, you know. Yeah. And she said Bob Dylan wants us to come to New York and play in his album. So we went there. So. That was one of the biggest um, opening up for us. Like, mm -hmm. I know we, Peter Touch just took us on the road, and so that he exposed us to the world because there was Bob Marley with Carlton and Family mm -hmm, Man, mm -hmm. and then, and they were like one of the they were the top recording musician at the time. Yes, and then comes Peter Touch, I was playing of the Whalers, mm -hmm. Sly and Robbie were the top recording musician. So that's where it started happening, and then the Greystone stuff opened another door for us. And put us inside because they didn't know it was Jamaican musician really mm -hmm. playing it. And the Gwen Gotcha stuff now, which was R and B. Yeah. Crossover. Yeah. And people wonder where these things come from. <laughs> when I look at the record, I can't Robbie. believe it. And then after that a lot of things started coming in coming mm -hmm. in for us mm -hmm. work and everything. I work with a couple of 
Japanese musician like Ryoshi Sakamoto and his people. And, and Sonata, Sonata, what's the name again? Another Japanese guitar player. Mm. Where we had two drummers and two bass. Yeah. Marcus Miller and Robbie myself and Omar, Omar, Ukima, whatever. I mean, Omar something. Another. Japanese. No, Omar is an American. Of all the international collaborations, which one has done the best financially? <laughs> Every one of them, I mean, for them, all of them went gold. I would figure out the Rolling Stone stuff yeah. was really good. The No Doubt stuff was good because they got the first two Grammys they win yes. in life was the mm -hmm. one track we produced for them. Oh. Them. But the Bubble and stuff was, was the stuff everybody was looking forward to. And they was one there. What was the name of that album? Infidels. Infidels. So they say, hey, choose Slime Robert to come and play. So everybody was one yeah. but And you played on all the tracks? Yeah, on the end product. When they heard they couldn't believe it. They said, yeah. wow, this is. Like, but he wanted, I think he wanted something different. Like, he heard some of the records that they're playing. Yeah. He figured that the sound of myself and Robbie could fit. Mm -hmm, what he, was mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. he wanted us to come in. There's something just different yes. from the regular stuff he, he yeah. was doing as his comeback album. Mm -hmm. So, we went um, to New York and did it at Power Station. And that the same year, while we were recording his album, we take like a break. And he went out front and came and said, you guys just won the Grammy. That's the first reggae Grammy. Yeah. With Black Hole. With um, a, an album called Anthem. First reggae Grammy. That's reggae Grammy. Like, and you know. and Robbie was on. Yeah, man, we played it. I no, mean, you we played it. Too. Yes. We produced it. Yeah. Um, you would have won a Grammy for our Friends. For the we Friends for album. The friends mm. yeah. So that was strictly you and Robbie. Yeah, that was our project. Mm -hmm. but Black Hole were a part of the group too. Yes. Okay. Okay. So okay. okay. Hours, so you would have won how many Grammys in just total? Two, just two. So the one for Friends and, and the one with Black Hole. Yeah, and we nominated around 14 times. About 14 <laughs> times. You would have also done other albums. Slagoville. Sly Wicked. And Slick. That's one. Wicked and Slick. So Sly, Sly Wicked and Slick. Slagoville was for Island Records. It was for Island Records. Simple Slimon was the first one. That was the first, yes. I was just trying to see if I could produce an album. Slick and Wicked was the one, the second one. I went in and really structured it. And, and as Oswald as, as told me that when that album came out in London, everybody had a copy on it. Mm. I said, really? So Sly, you don't live here, you know, we live here. We are telling you. I said, wow. Yes. Okay, so music for us like is, to me, I see it as an easy thing to do. Yeah. Because this is what I've grown yeah, up. Yeah, I've been doing up, it for, for a long uh, time. I grew up doing it and, and it's something that I really love dearly, you know, so. Father Red Rose, yeah. big of yourself, sir. <laughs> bless it, bless it. So my life and time, isn't it? So it's something that I really love very, very much. Mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. so when I'm in it, like it's in me here, I sit here all day just yes. listening, playing and getting ideas too. Because I, what I always do, I try to check the people's mind, what they want to listen to mm -hmm. next. Not all the time you're really right, but you're trying to focus on Yes, you're them. preempting. Because it's not for me, mm -hmm. it's for them. It's for the people. Because I'm, I'm enjoying making it, but yes. when I'm finished now, I hope they you enjoy want it too. enjoy it as well. Yes, yeah, so I have to figure their mind what they want to listen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes it might be a bit too early because, you know, sometimes they probably a little bit slow changing yes. over. But you put the product out sometime and sometimes mm. manifest take a couple of years and same thing that was there to start. Yeah. That that's deep enough for I don't know. Before we go any further though, Sly Sick and Wicked. Yeah. Um Friends, Sly Govale, which yeah. was your favorite body of work. I, I think um Friends Friends is Friends is a a project album like with um other artists singing it, but yes. Sly, Sly Sick and Wicked was just my solo album just for your album. So, I wouldn't say it was favorite because the music still evolved and still go, but when you tour, a lot of people come to me and say, this was the first album I bought and this is like one of the best albums still out of Jamaica. I said, mm -hmm. really? And a lot of people said to me, like, like why well, stop doing solo albums? Although you rub it together, but you could still yes. make a Robbie mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Slay and Robbie album, still do a Slay yeah. and Robbie record. Because <laughs> I think of some kind of weird things sometimes yeah. to do. And they say, if they, they, they kind of miss that, that's the way no one says Sly and Robbie is stronger. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, with fair enough, Robbie fair enough. Again, it, it's much fair better enough. Thing. You would have worked with almost all the icons and legends in the Jamaican entertainment yeah, space. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm going to start calling names. <laughs> what would have been your favorite memory or experience working with a Jamaican entertainer? Why? Well, all the Jamaican entertainers who have worked with were very important to us mm -hmm. because. I mean, if you work with an artist and the artist become a hit or the summer coming, then people start asking who's doing you know? it. So every project you go, every artist you try to work with, you try to get the best, try to lay the best rhythm for him so he could have a hit rhythm or a hit song or something mm -hmm. like that. So everybody's really important. Yes. You can look and say, I don't like this one, I don't like. 
Once you go inside to make it, when Rob and me, myself think, we say, okay, we're going to try and make an hit record today. Every time we go into the service, we want to come out with a hit. Uh, if not a great hit, but some popular kind of song that, yes. that people will like, you know? Because if the song come out there and it's a miss, sometimes you feel like you flop, you know? <laughs> so in our arts, and so when we're going, we're going to try and make a hit record. Right? So yeah. Every artist is important to me, yeah. every one of them. What was it like working with Peter Tosh? It was great. That was a great experience for us. Cause like, and when Robbie had asked me to come, if I want to come and join him with Peter Tosh, I said, because I was... I just came up from a tour with Dennis Brown in England. I said, mm. yeah, man. So Robbie and Peter had went up to New York to meet with Keith, Rich Keith Richards and Mick mm -hmm. about signing Peter to the label. And we come back and the first album we did with Peter was Equal Rights. Equal Rights. Yeah, that's the first album. And then we went on a tour, you know, so. And then everything started happening. And Robbie and myself, you know, them, those times we would share room together mm -hmm. because, you know, the budget and yeah, yeah, yeah. start talking about how we can project the music and what we could do and what we I start experimenting a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is where we are today, like, you know, so. Yeah, we had a vision to try and make the the people happy and we were looking back at the stuff the scatterlights that playing people like Jack and me too mm -hmm. and all the, the older musicians that put into it and we want to keep on the same standard with them. They make it made us happy as kids growing up and listening to music. So we say we want to do the same thing. Same thing. thing. Reciprocate. So, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Did you ever get a chance to work with Ken Boot though? Yeah man, Ken Boot did a song for us. He did a version of Show and Tell. Mm -hmm. And he did another another song for us. But Ken Boot is like one of my favorite singers, you know? From ever since. You know? And yeah. alternators. I worked mm -hmm. with alternators. So but all of these artists like the old artists are Leroy Sibley's, uh, Jackie Opel, um, Winston Francis, the Gay Lads. All of them tell us like this is this is these are the people we learn from, right? Mm -hmm. So respect them so much and look up to them very very highly, you know. Yes. Have you ever built a trap where when you're listening back you're disappointed? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we go back in and try correct it, you know. Mm. Sometimes, but we work here myself with Robbie and sometimes we feel as an outside producer. Yes. We have some guideline or somebody that say this mm -hmm, is better mm -hmm. or that is better because sometimes. We might think it's all right for you, and then the person come up with like we, we work with a producer in, in, in America called Bill as well, and he produced a couple of albums for us. He produced an album called Rhythm Killer, which uh, we had a ten, top ten song from it in, in England, and mm -hmm. he produced a song for us which was a nominated for a reggae Grammy, it was a nominated for R and B Grammy. Oh, okay, and it's so another nomination. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so we work with a lot of outside producers and most of the time when we go in these sessions they kind of leave everything up to us you know? yes yes but we don't as i said we don't go overboard no 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 we no try to play it because we're looking to get the hit record so mm -hmm. we work together with producers and outside people like Bootsy collins and yes. all these people we come on board sometimes to work yeah. you know this might be an unfair question though seeing that you said that you would have worked on over a million tracks yeah what is the single favorite track <laughs> in your head that you would have done that one day you sit down and you play it as right. often as you can i tell you every one of them is like i mean to me everyone is important one, yeah. even the, the public even sometimes bring my attention back to certain things yes i might never really like it so much but when i see the appreciation about it, what mm -hmm. i say I don't know try but to love this record to try <laughs> love it you know yeah so every, every track is like i think man sit back and listen and say it's all right, I could have played it better, but <laughs> the people love it, so, yeah. like, like, for example, I remember when we played um, Jacob Miller's song, All Night Till Daylight, it was a festival song, and we did it in the morning, and we went down to Channel 1 to do um, Freddie Mackey, the Big Hill Boots, and I remember as I walked into the studio, um, Jojo said, we have to win, and I said, yeah, man, we have to win, <laughs> yeah. I never heard the tune yet, but... Oh, you never hear the, the, the vocal? Yeah, okay. No, I never. So when I walk in, they were working out. Mm -hmm. Bobby Ellis was working mm -hmm. out the part and they were singing. So I sat down, so I listened to the song and I said, wow, I said to Ernest, I call him China. Mm -hmm. Soup up the drums, China. Soup up them drums. Yeah. We're going in for it and went in for it. And when I heard the song, I said, wow, this like, arm section sounds good. So. I went to the cup of the cymbal and started playing like a festival thing to give this happy feeling. Mm -hmm, so I was mm -hmm. thinking about and all the records that we grew up listening to sounding very happy. So yeah. I said, well, this is a festival record, so I have to make it very happy. So mm -hmm. 
And just as though I kind of predicted it, it came out the same, and that was the winner. It's one of the ones that you love a little bit more than the others. No, why I love it is because um, that's, that's the, the, the construction of what it was for. The yes, time. yes. I was sitting beside me and he said, part two. Yeah. And, and, and I changed the jump pattern a bit and mm -hmm. the studio was like on fire. Yeah. <laughs> that guy, Good memory. Like I said, this song was like a special kind yeah. of a festival. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to win. And the other place on the kind of recording that yeah, you're going to be doing mm -hmm. to make the song a winner. But you see, uh, Robbie himself has done a lot of work with Jacob. You know, like, yeah. Like, forward, they were back with him, but we played a lot of the songs. So, mm. yeah. But Jake and I were like good friends because when we used to play a tit for that, he would pass you on a Saturday night and sing two songs, you know? Yeah, yeah. And spend smoke and then go down to, yeah. go to the next club, sing two and two. And again. <laughs> so I said, no, we're playing a tit for that. So yeah. I'm going to check slime, I'm coming mm. in. Jacob sounded like by, it was a cool umbrella. Yeah, man, I'm coming by the band and, and I'm signaling to him, I said, all right, and say, yeah, man, mm. no, the song, I'm just playing yeah. song, I'm singing two two. You ever played for Bob? Yeah, we did, um, we did Punky Reggae Party. Mm. And I did some other song for him by Wally Perry. Oh, okay. But we used to talk very, to Bob. Yeah. As good friends, you know? Like, we used yeah. to go and check him sometime. Yeah. And when he, if he's in New York and we are there, I was going to check Link him. Link up. Yeah. Mm. You played a lot for Lee, though. Lee um, Perry? Scra Lee Scratch Perry. We did a couple of songs for him. I did a couple of songs like um, Police and Thieves. Mm -hmm. And that, and I did, I think I did a version of a song for Bob. We sing um, Smile in Jamaica. There was two versions of it. I think I do I play on so many tracks sometimes. <laughs> I don't know the name of the track. Yeah. I, I, I played on lead. Understandable. I play and understand them. And so I don't know the song came out or what <laughs> name it came out. It, 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 it will come on that so Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know? Do you have a catalogue of your, of your songs them though? No. No? No. How oh, come? In them days it was so early the the catalog um catalogue is a song and everything. Mm. So it was as you you're young and it was Yeah, have fun. Yeah, just playing, I just yeah. love it and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. But now everything is, is can, can be um, categorized now because there's so much way to save it. And yeah. a lot of people. Especially digitally. I'm telling some people are doing it for me and telling me mm -hmm. how many <laughs> songs I've done and, and how the song, tell yeah. me which song I've played and when it was done. Yeah. So, really, you know, so. Yeah. Not the pride, though, Father Dunbar, but the royalty check seems like them every month. No, not really. We come in. <laughs> we said that really. <laughs> they come in and just like, but as. as Musician, you know, to go up and say, you know, spend on equipment and you know, yeah, yeah, because you have to keep the thing evolving. Yeah, but most of the spend them spend it on equipment, yeah, you know, for you yeah, to go to the next stage. All the time. I know all happen? about that, sir. Come on up, you have you're competing with the outside people, yes, man. And in that world, you have to have the stuff that they are using, yeah, yeah, to compete with them, yeah, mm, makes sense. Looking back at the career, is there a moment that you can look back where you said it was a regret? Nah, man, no, no regrets. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> then I just sat down and I said, Boy, if I know the music, what I do? Yeah. I said, No, I couldn't take it. I don't know what I would do because yeah. I'd be the most boring person in the world to me. <laughs> but the, the music is like, I don't, I can't, can't, you can't explain what it mm. has done to me and, and plus other people who are not musicians, are just listeners. Yeah. And I see what they reaction when they talk about music and I say, Wow. Mm. So for me, music is life, it's everything. Is there anything that if you had the chance to do, you then do differently? Do over, you then do differently? Uh, in music? Yes, in a musical journey, career. No, well, I put a stand the father still because I think it's, he knows the direction to take in and it's just one step at a time. So every mistake you make, you try and, cop and correct it. So I don't think, um, I kind of feel satisfied. I mean, it could be better still, but like for example, a 14 year old you play a million sellers. So, for example, you're getting money from it and you say you are, say, rich at 14 year old, what would you do? Probably get crazy. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it's like, I know I grew up. Everything before, happened. Everything in time I grow with step by step. Stages step by and step. phases. Yeah, so for us, it's just the music and respecting other musicians. Mm -hmm. and we know there's a next stage of all the time. We have to yes. keep on moving it, moving mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like, for mm -hmm. example, 2020 is coming in and, you know, the music has to step up. I don't know if everybody's thinking that way, but I'm thinking... Say, thinking ahead. Everybody wants to have something fresh for 2020. Everybody, like, every year, everybody likes to try to get brand new. Yeah. And to step up, yeah. moving forward. So I look and say, 
Well, with music has to go forward too yeah. because everybody's moving in that direction. <laughs> Evolution. Yeah. But it's like music to me is everything. It's life is, it makes you relax, it makes you calm, yeah. it makes you smile. Mm -hmm. And like when you work on a drum truck and, and say, for example, Robbie or Red Rose or Garfield Roar, somebody walking or somebody from outside the mm -hmm, street. Mm -hmm. And so well, that's wicked, you know. You really feel like you have done something great. Yeah. Know? So you're done, boy. I look like you're in the studio from Sunday to Sunday, though. Yeah, man, I love it. I, I, could, I, tell you, I, I could actually sleep there, you know? Yeah. Because when I come here sometimes to work, I just sit by the machine and sometimes mm -hmm. we play some, some stuff, music, and sometimes a bunch of us in here talking. Mm -hmm. But sometimes talking can lead up to ideas. So yes, true, 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 true. So sometimes we have a conversation and we're talking about the old lips and where things in music can go. And somebody will come in and say, I've heard this song. So you now I say, I play for me. I say, oh, it's great. I say, yeah, we could flip it or do something with it and make it our own, you know? That's yeah. an idea. Mm -hmm. We want to start using things like for, um, a re as a reference. Yes. I say, like, we could say, oh, look at this record. It's a big seller. I say, okay. You get some um, ideas from there. We check the tempo and check what they're playing. I say, okay, we know mm -hmm. what they're doing. <laughs> we could do something almost like, yeah. we, don't, we don't have to use 90% mm -hmm. of the record. All we need is 5% of yes. it. Yes. And we'll add the next, because we have to skid keep most of the, the originality. For, for, no, most yes, of our percentages of reggae. Because we are working and to develop reggae and dancehall. I love dancehall very much. And for mm -hmm. me now, I've done the R&B stuff and it has worked. I've done the rock stuff and it has worked. And reggae has worked, but, you know, and I, we work with Shaka Demos, who was mm -hmm. the biggest pop artist in Jamaica. And they had like five songs of one album in the chart in England. And mm -hmm. I work with um, Max the Priest, all of these people, and I've been mean, it record closely and all these songs, and all Scar with him and Shabba and everything. So, and I work a lot with specialists with the, um, the Omer record and mm. cheerleader and everything. You know? Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, so, you know, all we can do now is to say we can take it forward a bit. So, mm -hmm. you know, but I always respect everybody's idea mm. people in the industry outside and listen to what they have to say yeah and i would take idea of what they're saying and i try to see how i can mend it you know not all the time you're right but you, you try you know mm -hmm. so you'd have mentioned just now you'd have done r and b being successful yeah. reggae being successful you see a love dancer what is your favorite genre to work now right now i'm projecting jamaican music and i don't want to play r and b stuff because R&B stuff belongs to the American, yes, right, or whatever, yes, but yes. the dance hall and the reggae stuff is ours. So we feel we have to work to develop it up to the level. I mean, it's there now because Drake has used it, Ed Sherman mm -hmm. has used it, so we should yes, at home now, yes. try to sit down and try to say, let's do it for ourselves now and stop depending on the foreign the community. But it's a good idea when they come in and, and, yes. and like our music. Mm -hmm. So if they like our music, they can say, okay, they're liking it, that means they're in a good position, so mm -hmm. we don't have to get to work now. Yeah. And do what and when they sample the original entertainers, them, 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 them yeah. benefit as well. Yeah, so my idea now is to take the Jamaican artists who really want to go play it and see what we can do mm -hmm. with them to take them there. And if they're ready for the, the kind of success, because you have to be ready, you know. Yeah. You can't wait until that moment. Mm -hmm. So you're working now with a group of... Working with everybody, everybody. who still have the talents. You know, mm -hmm. we're working with Liba, we work with Shireen. Work with Red Rose, we're working with Sly Robert ourselves as artists, mm -hmm. work with Arkai. Okay. work with this girl called um, Crystal and we work with Arkai. Mm -hmm. And we have worked with a lot of artists and things like that. And a lot of music centers we still yeah. work with Robin, we work with Linky Mars and mm. everybody. So the work continues. Yeah, there's a bunch of music centers we work with sometimes and we're trying to trying to get to get to that point with the music, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they kind of understand sometimes what they're looking for. Yes. Dean Fraser is there from ever since, you know? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the biggest stage that you'd have walked on to perform as a The biggest drummer? stage I've walked on with Rolling Stone, 110,000 people in Philadelphia with Peter Tosh. Remember the year? I think the year would be 1978. Uh, mm. 78, yeah. 110,000 people. Yeah. Football match at Inner Serp Dot Bar. Yeah, I want to listen to him like it's a music match. <laughs> it's a music match. Yeah, yeah, that must have been an awesome experience. Yeah, look at everybody look like it's like a bunch of black people with him. Everybody yeah. look black. As man. far as far as you can as see. Can't play black headed, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make your money blind blind get locked up in the black. Yes, you know? yes. 
<laughs> yeah, man, that was big on the play Anaheim Stadium. I think I'll mention it on Facebook and someone said I was at a concert. Mm -hmm, around mm -hmm. fifty thousand people and you know, so Yeah. It was a big stage and we have done a couple of stuff with Black Hero. Mm hmm with um opening for police and open for the Rolling Stones and Black Hole was like our kinda what do you call it now? Kind of little project that we had started. Um, yeah. With Michael coming to check and start the whole black hole movement and start breaking out with a certain kind of music and kind of rhythm and groove, you know. Mm -hmm. And then it was good. And it's still, the music still lives. So the greatest thing, you know, is when you have done all these music, say, like from 1978, and people still yeah. look at it and loving it. Amazed. You're amazed, and it's about you just want to do more. This is what keeps it going, you know, with the people. Yeah. Where's your favorite place to perform? Perfect <laughs> yeah, favorite place to perform. You when know, you know like, you've got a place, so you get a local vibe. Yeah, I'm ready. Well, I'm always ready for anywhere, you know. <laughs> anywhere, cause yeah. yeah, you see, the main thing, that thing you have to prepare yourself, you know, for it, and you have to focus. Most of the time when I'm going to play, I play the concert already in my head, you know. Yeah? Yeah, man, I sit and look at it, because it's something you have to really take serious, because you're going to answer to perform, and you really want to perform, mm. so you have to meditate on the performance. Mm. Or we can perform, or what again do. Like, you're not going to do anything crazy, but yeah. you just hope that everything Yeah, goes envision good. the performance yeah, from before yeah, it. Yeah. That, yeah. That's good, guys. It's good for, for like the planning. Going, going on tour sometimes, start exercising, start working out. Start yes. Make sure you're fit mentally. mentally and physically. Yeah. I know you can really play and perform. So, when you walk and like to do the first show, the first show is like a dress rehearsal to get it right. It's okay. <laughs> Ready show, to go now. First sure, show, cool. They say, yeah, man, we can. Yeah. You know, to go from there, you know, yeah. second or third show, fourth, by the way, the fourth show, it's about to sit down, like, you're on the race track. Yeah. Ready to win the race, you know? Yeah. There's, there's a saying, Father Dunbar, that says, what you give a man, we have everything. Now, speaking to you, you'd have achieved practically everything there is to achieve musically. But you keep on working. Is there something that you have not achieved as yet musically that these are the things I'm going to want? <laughs> Well, you see, the people mean a lot to me, you know, because you see, them who, the one who put us there, and mm -hmm. I always have to always, always re remember them. I know that they are there listening, and not saying I'm the, the best musician, I'm not the best musician or anything, I'm the best drummer. Mm -hmm. I no, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> okay. I'm, not. I'm just being myself, and yeah. that, 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 that I think of, and yeah. just do it, you know? Many people will disagree with you on that, though. <laughs> no, I, don't, I, never, I never think I'm the best drummer. Oh, okay. Like, so you're always aspiring to become the best there? No. no? I, mean, I never say, I, when I was young, young, I used to pray. Mm -hmm. I got to tell me, be a good drummer. Be a good drummer. But I don't think I'm the best drummer. I just be myself. Yeah. And the way I think of it. Yeah. Like, I would sit here and I think, I'll say, okay, I could play the drum in space. I was going and do it. And the people said, I like it. And I don't have other drummer probably doing the, the same thing I'm doing. They might not be doing it. Mm -hmm. But people easily you know what I did. And people said, they like it. Like, yeah. When I did the right time come, I was thinking of just playing, and I did it. And yeah. I said, wow, this is wicked. The right time come and the right says, time. And the body starts to look at them and say, slide, and say, oh, yeah. the Then the next time come, I go all out and try to find the next thing. Mm -hmm. I want to say, yeah, this is wicked. And like, for example, I can give you an example. Like, you know, like, um, ah, could I live Dennis Brown, mm -hmm. right? I wasn't the one who did the original track. I yeah. was on tour. When I came back, um, Errol Thompson, said to me like Joe Gibbs wanted to come and hold up all of these drums. I said, oh, really? Fifteen drums? I said, no, I mean what what's wrong with them? I said, they're not rocking. I said, well yeah. I know when they say not rocking what they mean. So I said, really? But these are a good drummer play this, I think everything sounds good. I said, mm -hmm. no, that's what you think as a musician, but <laughs> they wanted to hold up it. I said, okay, so first thing so I went in and they said, put up Dennis Brown song, because they really need us to get the Dennis Brown. Yeah. So I tell him, like, I was listening to the bass line at Live Parks at play, and I said, it's one way I hear this, you know. And he looked at me and I said, do anything you want to do, but mm. but not, don't play what is there, but I never listen to what is there. I said, yes. do anything you want to do. It's like, what is there can't come out. So I remember I started playing the truck, and there was a, a, guy, a friend of mine in the studio called Enos McLeod and a lot of people, and I started playing. Everybody threw them on, and I said, this is it, it's gone, it's yeah. gone. And I said, really? <laughs> But this was, I'm feeling for the song. I don't yeah, know what the yeah, drum yeah, was yeah. feeling when you heard the song. Mm -hmm. So I would sit closely, because what happened is, I used to dance, you know. Mm -hmm. like, I used to dance on television, TADP and these things. Yeah. And my friend and I used to dance, like James Brown and them things. So we're kind of looking at the same. My mother and I used to watch Eddie Thomas, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm realizing mm -hmm. 
the body movement is good about the beat the, playing. Me, the, the music so I start looking at it very important so I start putting things like that inside the music and people start liking it you know mm -hmm. so I said wow so yeah, your, your dancing background helped to influence the yeah, type of beats that you created. Playing in club bands for dance people. Mm -hmm. We were playing against the discotheque sometimes. Yeah. We had to keep looking on the dancers. Yes. We were selecting this kind of song and to keep people there. So we have to play a certain way. So we just kind of soulful mm -hmm. feeling, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we, we put that in the kind of recording. Like, for example, there's this guy by the name of Serge Gainsbourg, and he, he's from France. He's dead now, and he came to Jamaica to do a recording. And he came and I said, I know, I know this name, and he was one of the song called Jetty Man. I said, that might be the guy who came to Jamaica, did the recording, did the French national anthem in reggae. And it, it, this is the biggest selling reggae album ever yeah. in France. And mm -hmm. the other day, they celebrated 40 years of it, and I was in France, and I had to do an interview because they're saying that you were the, the only one that, and we were there at the time, we had to do a lot of interviews on it. And, Big yeah. celebration and everything about the record because yeah. the biggest record, selling record. Yeah. Three interviews though, Sir Dunbar. You look like you don't do a lot of those. No, interviews. Interviews? Yeah. Yeah, man, I, used, I know how important interviews, but sometimes I choose which one I want to do because okay. sometimes you have to be in a mood sometimes to the interview. Uh, yeah. Right? Really, and sometimes I'm not in because sometimes I like cameras, but sometimes. Tell me you don't. Yeah, you know, but sometimes. I'm happy that you chose this one, sir. Well, I don't know about it. It's probably. You know, you're probably sent from the from by themselves to do this yeah, interview. You know, yeah, yeah. What that means, you know, I'm a very kind of shy person. Yeah, I'm a, what kind of sense that still. Yeah, and I, I like staying behind the scene, you know. Because mm -hmm. you say the front line is good and the front line is bad. And you have to true, know what to talk about. True, 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 true. So sometimes you just make music and just so make the music speak for itself. And yes. And just stay behind, you know. If yeah. there's some important come that you have to come up front where you have to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. But if you're not, again, you'll stand behind the curtain and stay there, you know? Yeah. The music today, though, I'm speaking about dancehall, per se, because yeah. you say you love dancehall. Mm -hmm. Is there anything about the music at this point in time where you would change if you had mm -hmm. the opportunity to do so? We're not talking about changing. Some of the guys, I think a lot of people are doing good and everything is happening, but we still have an act like a bridge out of a cross. Mm -hmm. And I think what we need now is that we need some good sound, good melody. Yes. That's where all the beat can come with the melody, but a lot of us is living off like making a rhythm and give it to me and then go and write a song. Nothing's mm -hmm. wrong with that too, but like when we're doing song like for Capleton dance and like say um tour, mm -hmm. Capleton was in the studio performing tour and making it for him and he yes. was performing the song and we were playing, oh. looking at him and he was boogering at this song. He was inside singing it. So we tried to nail it with attitude. And to try going with attitude and everything. So that make a lot of sense. So even when we're coming up a musician, like mm -hmm. a little right time come with a track with Made and Diamonds. Yes. Um song in it, right? But when the artist is there, it's a different thing getting the artist feel and his personality in the song. Like all of these black horror songs were made with Michael and the group inside singing. Yeah. And we're making rhythm for the song. And even check on Revolution, Dennis Brown was inside singing on the microphone, hold on to what he got, he was there. Um, mm -hmm. sitting and watching was there singing so when those rhythms drop I mean there's no way it could not be it because yeah, Dennis because was in front was of you there. and he was singing and with emotion creation. and you're looking at how he was performing mm -hmm. and he was sitting and watching and singing and you see his movement and yeah. he was grooving up for his, so that make a lot so, of sense so this is where this I most of these rhythm are like champion rhythm you can't mm -hmm. erase it no 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 true you true know? because the art yeah, yeah. That make a, so you're saying then one of the things that these the, the younger generation of artists need for though instead of just making a man build a rhythm send come give you your day on the spot yeah it's, it's good enough so the emotions nothing are wrong. captured yeah nothing's wrong with that but when mm. artists come in front of you and singing right yeah and look at the artist performance so he's singing it then he starts shape the groove with him because he's there in front of you and all of these black hole songs there's no rhythm Everything was made for them. Inside singing, I would say, this is the groove one. Michael would sing and look here and watch, watch the attitude when you hear the beat playing. Yeah. I say, yes, this is it, this is the groove. So when it's time comes to voice, you made that song. Yeah, the song you it already. If you're doing like 10 songs, mm -hmm. each song would have a different feel. Yeah. But then that's in the same melody. Yes. I have played each song in a different pattern and you play that way. Sometimes you can go and make um, a rhythm is for an artist and it come and voice. But not every time it's going to work. Yes, yes, yes. But if artists will come up, some artists need to get the rhythm, the beat first, mm -hmm. to write. That's all good too. Yeah. But if artists come with a song, because some artists come to a song and can't write so good by themselves, but they will come with 
Give them the beat and they will write on it. Mm -hmm. That's all right. It yeah. works Every, it's, it's different you know? things work for different folks. But I think when it come in front of you and sing, I say, okay, I don't think it's kick drum sound good as voice or anything. So let's try this one. I think it worked. Mm. Based on because I prove it with the cable and stuff and yeah, it's in tour. He was right there with the flag man inside the studio. <laughs> Tell him, man, was the studio was on fire. That was a bit of a good experience. Yeah, I said, yeah, man, on fire, man. <laughs> so, even the same thing like when, when Ansel, we were singing um, Woman Like a Shadow. Mm -hmm. He was inside singing it. So, you look at him singing, and that took us around four hours to cut that record. Every yeah. time we reached a certain part, and someone made a mistake. Yeah. I have to play back with the same intensity because yeah. I don't know which take is going to be that one. <laughs> So this is where you really capture the artist, mm -hmm. feel and input into mm -hmm. the whole recording of the musician and yeah. the artist together. Yeah. Now the musician going to make a rhythm and sometimes yeah. the artist comes You know the funny thing about all of what you say, all the songs that you'd have mentioned where the artist was there when you're building the rhythm, all those songs have been monster hits. Monster hits, man. Yeah, man. Must work. So there, there's, there's a message in it. Yeah, man. Even uh, when, uh, for example, I listen like Mr. Wire, he said, Carl Malcolm and No Jason. Yeah. He was in there singing. Mm -hmm. He made it just like his image. Just so okay, he was singing and he said, this is how it has to be because he's always feeling it. And watching no Mr. Wire, we Cool, but he just yeah. I mean, Jerry White was singing like she like it was a judge out there. She was there singing it, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. see her action. I see, I say, this is where you have to play the cards, you know. Yeah. So it's 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 it's, it's different. Even yeah. for example, in the Buckingham Palace, Peter, everything was inside. He was you know, we're playing, and Peter was singing the guitar. And you see the whole groove. Can I said, this is it. This is right there. But I love the dance hall thing very much, and we saw some more development to do with dance. I can't, can it's. Dance all the sky is the limit. You can yeah. go anywhere. Yeah. Um, we don't we mostly look at it as just dance all. We have to look at it as music, Jamaican music. And if we get like the back in the part of musicians to come involved and look at it as serious, you can go play some because it has a lot of um, character in it. Mm -hmm. True. And it's locked up with everything, African, Latin, Calypso, everything is inside of it. And it still is Jamaica. Yes. I think we should project it and read it. But we need, we need some songs, mm. melody to, to really enhance it now, you know? Yeah. Family life. Married? Yeah, married and just cool and easy, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a free man. Uh, yeah, the wife. No, it's when it comes to music. Yeah. Every daughter and body. Yeah. For me, ever since, because I've been doing this from a kid, you know, so mm -hmm. everybody knows this what They know the story. Everybody just knows add up and adjust. Everybody knows that. My niece, my niece is them. Yeah. Then just know the freedom of just give me the music and just yeah. leave me. I mean, right, then I don't want the food. <laughs> Kids. Just one. Just one. Yeah, man. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows that. You know, Chris Buckley used to say that put slime rub in the food and leave them. Don't worry. Yes. They'll find it. Yeah, they'll find it. And Rob is okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Everybody's mm, fine. Okay. And, there, there's a, and then there's a lot of young musicians and producers and engineers coming up that. Most of the time, some young artists come around us and sit and talk and show them much love, you know, give them... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's them important. ...what they can do. And like sometimes, I was talking to Ziggy and I said, you know, it's hard to, for me to leave Jamaica because then the kids are there growing up and they just want somebody that can go to and ask some question. And Guidance. But I said, leave when people like Santa is a good drummer is not in Jamaica no more. These people say that are recording, like Carlton Barrett is recording, Asmo is here still as a good drummer. Mm -hmm. Paul Douglas is not here and certain people. So, well, Desert Jones is here and everybody. So, sometimes I, mean, I might be about the more player of the day, you know, but I might be the one who out there. They're doing a lot of work and it's yes. working. So, um, they would come to me and for Father Sly, I'm just ask a couple of questions and I would explain to them. And they would ask, Oh, you do this because it sounds good. Like somebody to come to me and say, this producer guy said, when I love the snare, that I use an iron to come out of record. Mm -hmm. I said, really? He said, yeah, laugh. And I said, yeah, you really, say you like it. I said, yeah, so I just love it, you know? So, you know, it was like a thing, like, if they know somebody that they can go to, like, they know the slides in Germany, so we can't find slides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, America and all outside the world is good, but Jamaica is a special place, you know? True, true. So, and the people have give you the power certificate from Jamaica. <laughs> and for me to, to go to make it. and yes, give you the yes, Jamaica yes. public, mm -hmm. stamp it and say, Sly, yeah. you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And I, I, my Robbie went out there and trying to keep the flag flying. And I mean, I don't know if it worked that much, but probably it worked a little still. You know? so, yeah. But we give thanks to the Jamaican people's support, you know? Yeah. 
Really, really, they're very important. Very, very important. Mm. And when they're making music, they're the one that think of them. Yes. And how they're going to react to it. And I look at them probably dancing. Or what is it? Because they still make a lot of like instrument. Because some people love the instrument. You know? Yeah. And they look at us as they come out with some instrument. They're not going to sell big, but you never know which one is going to yeah, sell big. You don't know. You don't know. True, true, true. It might true. make it today, mm. and then it's five years, something happens that they use a truck. It trigger it. Some and trigger. And the become the biggest. Yes, true, true, so, true, true. <laughs> True. You know, so when we're making all this still like Night Dark, we didn't know it would be it. We just mm. recorded it until keep on just recording. Double bar was the same thing and it became a monster. So I kind of learned from that kind of school that it was going to make a recording. I know. am not some, somebody who's as steep in the musical aspect of the music as some people would be. But growing up, I have been hearing about the Rhythm Twins. I have seen, I have <laughs> listened a lot of things and you are not saying it. You say you're not the best. But you are probably the best I have heard. <laughs> I try to be good, but I don't know if my being good is good enough, you know. But the first thing I learned, like I was this drummer by the name of earlier, all right? Mm -hmm. He plays for Philadelphia International. I don't know if you know the MFS. No, not familiar with. We know all like all these OJ songs, like Backstabbers. You know mm -hmm. the song. Like, yes. He's one of playing those songs, and if you don't know me by now, and you know, he used to go up with the Delphonics, right? Yes. He's one who played drums and those things. I, I look at his Facebook stuff and the amount of trophy and gold record that he have won a song he has played on, you know? And he was he got an award, he was inducted in some kind of Hall, Hall of Fame, fame thing. and he had won so much trophies and thing and we talked to him on Facebook, you know, and when his birthday come, I think I'll be yeah, link him. And he's sing with the trumps, you know. And he made a speech and said, Look, I, I'm not the best drummer. Right? He he's credited for the one who create disco, right? Yeah. But what I do, I try and be myself. Mm hmm and I said, boy, that is so good that you know, I'm not the best drummer. I just be myself. And being himself is himself. Mm -hmm. He's playing what he thinks will work. And other people might copy him. Yeah. <laughs> but he says he's not the best. But mm -hmm. he's just being himself. And this is what he's feeling. I look at it from them time I was being. This is what I'm feeling. I don't know what the next guy's feeling. Speaking to you, I realize that your mother was an amazing influence on, on your life. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. your mother would, yeah, would, would, if she was still around, she would be yeah, amazingly she, proud of you. Yeah, she will. She, I tell you, man, something, when we were younger and light parts would come and get her, from just the light parts come and get her, she's just so smiling, up. man. Yeah, man. <laughs> we have come up, they are always really still and everything, you know, but mm -hmm. we, didn't even, that did, we didn't even know things like this would happen for us, that people would be into what we were doing because it was like so on the back burner thing that we never know. What about do we go through all the bad years of thing and uh, and the suffering and everything, mm -hmm. you know? And when you look at it today, your people gravitate over the music and worldwide. And sometimes you sit down and you cry, you know? <laughs> no, really, because yeah. you, you, you just, you know, sometimes you know what people are feeling out there, like suffering because um, we have been through it and yeah. it's hard work and we skillfully, you know, we didn't know the music could. Let us achieve certain. We never know. So, and you know, sometimes I look back and sit on myself, and you look to the hard that, you know, and sometimes the disrespect as musician used to get like mm. that. You know, you know, people start looking up to me. Even now, they still have some kind of disrespect for musician, but we don't worry about that because they say the music is global now. So yeah, <laughs> it's all right. One, you know, so yeah, just go in there and try and make it, make a hit record all the mm. time. We think. An entertainer that you have not worked with as yet. Did hope for work with that entertainer, but it hasn't happened. <laughs> Who would that be? Well, I really love Stevie Wonder. Stevie. Uh, we were born the same month, you know? <laughs> and I worked with him, and I knew he started as a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. And really a genius. And I watched him excel to where he is today. And yeah. I've never worked with him yet or anything mm. like that. And uh, I had my Michael Jackson. Yeah, that would have been a smash, you know. For example, I love everything that comes from Motown because yes. I, I kind of look at what Burr God has done with what his father has loaned him mm -hmm. for the music industry and we develop all the artists and everything. So I just I look at Motown as my university for everything. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, and there's a lot, lot of people in Jamaica, there are some young artists in Jamaica who I see have a talent, but sometimes it's not the direction. Mm -hmm. Nobody's seen the direction that is fitting for them. Like I remember in Maxi Priest, there was a a guy called Erskine to be around him, like his label, the label boss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Erskine, and Maxi Priest was supposed to sing a while, but they didn't like the song. But, yeah. but we know the song because we used to play it on stage. Yes. So we went ahead and laid the rhythm. 
And he actually sing this song like he didn't like it. He said he didn't he could did a, do a good version of the song. And so to come out to be one of his biggest songs. Yes. Earth cannot choose that song for him. Mm -hmm. So in this case, what I'm trying to say now, sometimes you have to have somebody who's thinking of your future as, yes. in, as an artist to come mm -hmm. and look for the song that they think you could do or suggest it. It's a suggestion. It's not nobody being a star, being yes, out Yes, yes, yes. But they're working together as teamwork. Mm -hmm. And yes. they say, okay, I think this can sound good. Because sometimes the people around you say they think further than you are seeing yeah. sometimes. You know. And we did. And I remember when we were doing Close to You Now, mm -hmm. it was the last track that came in. And I said to them, so well, the job is cool on it. That is their marks of No, 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 slide. Take off. <laughs> take off <laughs> that. Said, no, slide. Said, take off them drums. They put one slide on by yeah, drums. Yeah. Said, All right. <laughs> so I said, listen to track and I put on the drum. And it was really right. Yeah. It was a difference, you yeah. know. <laughs> and it, it became a big number one song for him yeah. in America. So, you know, Shaka Dimas was great. And, mm. I mean, most of the artists are great. Dennis Brown, Greg Ryan, like Greg Ryan like, gave us our first number one. He was always there. Which was the, what, the song? Was Soon again? Forward. Soon Forward. Soon <laughs> Forward. It was always there from being a song. Yeah. Most of the time, you know, I, me personally, me want to big up all singers. Yeah. All musicians. All producer, yeah. Everybody in the industry, the journalists, everybody, because with the music, them role. we couldn't have done it without all mm. of these people. So, my respect to them every day, every time, twenty-four-seven. No respect. Father Dunbar, mommy would be proud. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Definitely, man. she would be proud, man. I think she probably she's dancing. I agree, <laughs> she's dancing. You know? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, they've done it big and keep on doing it, and it is a pleasure for me. And for me, as I, I realize that you're a very humble man. But you're a living legend, sir. Well, you know, a lot of people say, I'm a living legend. I say, <laughs> really? They say, yeah. I say, I don't know what I've done. And I say, can I say, for me, I look at this thing like simple. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you grow up doing this thing and it's easy for me. But I realize sometimes when the word go and people hear it, it's like different. It means a lot different to them great, from, from what I receive. Because mm -hmm. I'm doing it right here. But when I'm actually feeling it, they've seen a different picture of it. From what I, what I'm playing right here yeah. to them, you know. So I really appreciate what they're saying still, and I, I, you know, give them enough respect. And when they say that, I was smile, and I said, really? And I said, yeah, man. True man. icon, man. True legend. It's a, sim a simple thing, you know, Father Dudbar. Realize he's a humble man, and you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're very grounded and thing. But when people say it, I true them attack, sir. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, like, you know, like he went ago, I remember playing on Michael Rose, last two Michael Rose, and Last show we did, and this guy comes and says, I've seen him 35 years, the last time I see Black Horror. Mm -hmm. And I said, slide down, but you hit it, those jumps are harder. <laughs> I said, really? I said, so you really mean it? Yeah, man. I said, I'm telling you, mm. you're kicking the shit. Like, you know. <laughs> I said, really? I said, man, 35 years I saw you, and I went come I to the concert, I think I was, you know, when I came tonight and, and heard, I said, man. It was like amazing. I said, really? Mm. Because you had a lot of people who used to follow us up from our kid because we started so young and immediately we were a success and mm -hmm, people started mm -hmm, following us mm -hmm. so You had them go up in the same age group and hearing the name and start checking the work and touring with Peter and all these things. And people come and say, you know, I'm tracking it on a list of everything. Some, the other day we signed, we signed some records and this guy coming on 24 albums. <laughs> And the next one coming next 24. And yeah. I said, bring them, come and sign them, because, mm. man, I'm waiting for this album for the day that I yeah, could get them yeah, signed. Yeah. And these people live in, like, they know where them, and I said, they won't come to Jamaica. Yeah, they yeah. know where them probably getting to yes. see me. More that moment. So, you know, the public, well, enough respect on the boy. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't have done this. Yeah. Because really should, they should really show the appreciation and mm. everything. So I love them. I think I love them more than how they love me. <laughs> they're the one. For me, they're the one. Yeah. And yeah. I respect them a lot, a lot, a yeah. lot. I say all musicians, singer, producer. Enough, enough, enough mm. respect. Musicians, everybody. I couldn't have done this thing. I mean, if they all know all these musicians, it wouldn't be no slide down. Mm -hmm. the producer, they wouldn't be done because they give me the chance to perform. And they never hold me back and say, don't do that. You know? Yeah. So, as I was saying, one more thing I was saying to Robin, I said, <laughs> We were doing a session and say, laugh, and Robin said, okay, laugh, I said, you know, sometimes we have a session and I do something, and you know, say, if one person said they don't like a play, you know, they have to change it, because yeah. the producer would say, well, Robin said I like it, and, and him laugh, and I said, you never, nobody never said they don't like right. it. Yeah. And him laugh, <laughs> and he said, he said to me, he said, like, sometimes I play something, or one that said, 
Oh, you're going to come out of the way again, though. And when I'm listening to playback, yeah. I said, boy, Everybody don't do boy. that. And Genius at work. No, and I said that. And I said, really, Robin? And I said, yeah, man, sometimes I do something. I went inside and I said, I said, boy, I want to thank you still for never even <laughs> you know, knock it and say, it's not going to work. Yeah. Every day said, no, I wouldn't even get you the chance to play. Mm. So I have to big them up and love them, you know? It's not only a pleasure, sir, Dunbar. It's an honor. Man, yeah, I don't respect for taking the time out for no all the reasons. Uh, you understand? No respect, and yeah, man. And this doesn't come like an interview. It comes like with us a reason. You know? Mad. Probably, probably should I sip out some, some, some fruit juice and everything. Yeah. Like, that, means dark, that means a lot. That means a lot. Means a lot. You know, say, it's the kind of best interview you can ever do, you know? Like, if you just sit on with all three people, four people and talk and... Mm. Just like the flow naturally. Yeah. And then people shoot the question like, yeah, man. and everybody and mm. it's not really structured yeah, TV yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, 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 man. That's good. Yeah. I appreciate that. Them. Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here. Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying until next time. Walk good, my friends. <laughs>